Oh my gosh, I'm actually a little overexcited. We're sort of embarking on a brand new way to stay connected. To actually, this is not new. This is, this is YouTube. This has been around forever, but I'm about to incorporate it into my overall online offering that just basically lets me get you a lot of new cool stuff for free. What? Okay, how's that gonna work? Let me just give you a little um, inside scoop on that. First of all, Ansuya.com is a huge archive now, and I know you're gonna stick with me there because you're always gonna be ahead of the game. For those of you that are with me by Skype or by Zoom, we are having such a good time getting together in our online tea parties and showcases, and we're having our weekend workshops. So now I'm just adding this YouTube component. This is our very first Let's Play Q&A Roundup. So here we go. Oh wait, before we start, I wanna make sure to tell you to stick with me till the end of this video. Why? Because at the end, I'm gonna break down a shimmy for you, but not just a shimmy. It's actually my favorite shimmy. So are you ready? Let's go. Hi, Renee. So Renee asks, do I pre-plan my meals? Ooh, yes, yes, yes. A master grocery list to stay organized. Ordering groceries two times a week to keep produce fresh. Disinfecting all the groceries, make sure that things are safe for COVID times. Using all natural products to disinfect, of course. Scheduling what to eat when. Not to mention a lot of experimentation and research. This is just basically a really important subject in our household. I mean, it's probably an important subject in every household. It's food. And it's a really exotic experience, I must admit, to explore your food, especially the sensuality of it. And what I mean by that is sight, taste, smell. I am vegetarian. And I have to say I'm pretty lucky because I've been a super healthy vegetarian, except for the 20 years where I toured. During that time, I maybe added a lot of Twinkies and Doritos and basically just gas station food when crawling across the US in that belly bus. But mostly at home, I've had a very nutritious life of eating really, really good vegetarian food. However, it would be my preference to be vegan, but I'm getting better at releasing the struggle component psychologically and emotionally, and I'll tell you what helped me with that. This term, veganarian, ding, 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 ding. I had no idea that there was a word for me. Now, labels aren't supposed to be important, but hearing this term somehow added some kind of dignity and validity to my process. And now process is really where it's at, where food's concerned and really where everything's concerned. But where food is concerned, you're gonna be different at different times of your life in terms of your hormone level, your environment, what your work life is like, what your schedule's like, what your energy needs are. Different body types are different from one another, so everyone's gonna have a different set of needs. So trying to fit into one mold perfectly sometimes is just really tough. So for me, Veganarian just helped me lighten up on my process a little bit. And I hope that helps you too if you're somewhere in the middle between vegetarian and vegan. So a quick day in the life of when I am vegan. Good morning smoothie, afternoon yummy green salad, cooked vegetables and fruit salad, and nighttime snack attack, avocado, papaya, and there you have it. Well, that's not exactly all in a vegan day. I have a lot of tea, which I really enjoy because it gives me energy and is also just can be very medicinal and very calming or very lifting depending on what tea you have. You know, I think I'm gonna bust out a whole video on this or probably several because I have to share with you what specific ingredients, uh, herbs, spices, and seasonings that make all this really flavorful and work really well. I mean, on a day like that, I can literally not crave anything else. So of course, also bear in mind, in case you have any medical predispositions or allergies that wanna be taken into account, and through experimentation, you might find more sensitivities or more proclivities. What does proclivity mean? I feel like saying proclivity, I don't know. Or discovering things that work for you that you might not have thought of before. And speaking of the physical aspect of your dieting, uh, so sometimes I'm like, I need to lose 20 pounds. And then other times I'm like, what am I talking about? I finally have the voluptuous curvaceousness that I was looking for my whole life. Because we typically embody more than one body type, not just throughout our lives, but even throughout the month. So my vibe right now about food is just to be captivated by the process of making beautiful food. Thank you for that question, Renee. Okay, this question's coming in from Ariella. Hi, Ariella. You asked me how I create my cat eyeliner shape, but you wanted to specifically know about the top line only. Well, I'm excited to tell you, you can get this done in one, two, three steps. It's three lines, it's all you need. There's a crescent, 
30 degree angle and a straight line plus some fill that really causes this to take shape. So that's a crescent line on the eyelid, a 30 degree extension, and the straight line connector plus fill. Oh no. You guys, is my trash can in this shot? That sucks. Okay, better. So Ariella, I just ordered a ton of cruelty-free vegan makeup from Morphe. I can't wait for the products to get here. How am I gonna do an unboxing video? Because seriously, each of these products that I ordered are perfect for a belly dancer's collection. Vibrant colors, the right eyeliner tip, and I just can't wait to show you how I use all of it. Because with just one more line, I create my full cat eye look. Two more, my tigress look. With three more comes my pharaonic eye look. Plus I have some wild, tribal, and Indian variations. Oh my goodness, I want this makeup to get here so bad. I ordered it, but it's like on the slow boat because of COVID. I don't know if it's coming on a boat, but you know what I mean? Shipping's slow right now, understandably. Safety first, makeup second. Yeah, that's true. But I can't wait for it to get here so we can start building these looks together. Thank you, Ariella, for the question. Mwah. Soroya, hello. You're asking, what is my creative choreographic process? So I love this subject because I feel like I can really demystify something. I can break this down for you in a way that's actually doable, bite-sized pieces, so you can really get to creating your choreography. One, pick music you love. You want to be turned on by the song. You know the kind of song that you just can't stop yourself from dancing to? You're going to have ideas a lot faster. That said, you can get really good at just the mechanics of how to create choreography, so much so that you're never intimidated. You can literally create to anything. Once you do this process a lot, you'll gain confidence. So second step, create a music map. This is epic. It's basically something that you can plug all your creativity into. It's the thing that will structure all of this flow and it's way easier than you think. Third step, make two lists. One, all abstract. This is gonna be your creative flow. You're gonna write down wild random things like the color red or the desert or, I mean, this can be really abstract. It doesn't have to be structured. It's going to be about you really letting yourself a vision board of everything that's coming to you while you're listening to your music, anything you're feeling, feelings you want to evoke in the audience, it can be really creative. You can also write down things that you don't even think you can physically do yet. Doesn't matter. Be honest, be real. This authentic journaling is really going to draw out your authentic artist within. The second list is going to be your more practical list. Maybe there's a combo that you already know how to do. Maybe there's a move. Maybe there's a costume that you already have planned. Maybe there's a section of the music that you see clearly already and you want to just get that down. So this is the writing process for creating the choreography. But the fourth thing you want to do is really make sure to give yourself time to close your eyes and visualize the music. It's from that state that you will start making little notes. Fifth thing is of course the physical. You want to get up and dance to the song. And you can actually video yourself improvising. Don't be shy with yourself for goodness sake because you want to be able to look at your own unfinished work. If you can do that either in the mirror or even on camera so you can review it back and not lose stuff that you might be creating spontaneously, that's ideal because because the raw, 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 er, raw, raw, because the more raw you are able to be, the mm, deeper you're going to be able to dig for the best material from within. So what do you do from there? It just seems like a pile of explorations, right? But that's where that music map comes in. Once you start noticing, okay, I have an intro, an instrumental section, I have the chorus, which repeats how many times? One of my favorite things about a music map is figuring out that I've got the chorus and then noticing the chorus repeats like three times and I'm like, I just completed three sections. So on the way through this process, if you have some speed bumps, I'm gonna have extra tips for you on this because I think this is a whole video too. Oh my gosh, I wanna make like a downloadable PDF choreography guide. Stay tuned. Hi, Farasha. So you asked how to organically grow a belly dance community where there is none. So first, think funnel with your marketing plan. That was a lot of gesticulation, but I'm just gonna go with it. So what does that mean? It means consider something free that leads to something paid, that leads to something more paid, that leads to something very paid. Free could be one free class. Paid could be a session of classes. Paid more could be a workshop. Very paid example could be a retreat. 
Now I happen to know you're planning a belly dance ranch in Idaho, so that would be perfect for that. But incentive is key. So free is free, so that's a pretty good incentive to come to a first class. For those that come to your free class, maybe you offer them a free hip scarf if they sign up for a session. For those that have come to your session, maybe you offer them a discount if they're gonna sign up for the workshop. And for those that came to the workshop, maybe something extra special like merchandise and a discount on the retreat. Or you can get creative here and help people come in and feel like your material is accessible, affordable, available, and ease them into deeper interest before they go into deeper investment. Which if you think about it, that's really fair because they know what they are feeling and experiencing and they can figure out if it resonates with them and then they actually honestly hook into and want a next level experience with you. So I think this really addresses how to keep people interested and retain them, but how to get people to come to your first free class. So at that level, what we need to do is think about collaboration. The collaboration is about really becoming in contact with someone else's contacts. That's the bottom line marketing point to it. But the fun part, the spirit of the thing is if the person you're collaborating with is also gaining something by collaborating with you, then it's a real team up. So for instance, say there's a local boutique and all the ladies that you wish would come to your belly dance class happen to shop at this boutique. So maybe you approach the owner of this boutique and you offer to hold a free class at their location. You just want to give them a little taste of what you have to offer. Think of a sweet reception where the ladies get to come and shop and maybe they get a special discount if they buy, let's say the store sells some really cool pants that would be perfect for belly dance and you have your hip scarves that you offer. Key idea, if you offer the promotion of buy the both together at a discount, then you and the boutique owner both profit from that merchandise sale. Also, the boutique owner gets to offer this really fun event to their clients. And you get to meet and network with all the ladies that are in your desired demo demographic. Demographic, target demographic. So think of that as their free class and then offer a special for them to come to take a session with you. Not a bad idea to have them sign in with their email address as well so you can continue to market to them if that's okay with the boutique owner and there's enough exchange there as well. As you build your own clientele, by the way, you will also be bringing your people to your future collaborations as you build your community. Therefore, the win-win gets win winnier as you go. I feel like there's a lot of really cool details to include here, pitfalls to avoid, extra tips I could give you. So I'm gonna bust out a bunch of marketing videos too because I think we're all really interested in that topic. So they're on the way. Oh, Michaela, thank you so much for asking about my mother, Janani Rotor, and my American Cabaret belly dance lineage. I'm a big fan of hers, and so I'm so glad to hear that you are as well. So the question you had was, how did she start belly dancing? It's a love at first sight scenario. So my mom and her girlfriend were in their teens at the time, and they were standing in line for a movie. And there were two handsome young gentlemen in front of them in line who got to talking and chatting with them and mentioned that they were going to be organizing a Middle Eastern cultural event and wanted to find out if the girls would like to come to it. Of course they said yes and when they went my mom saw her first belly dancer at this event and that belly dancer was Antoinette Oasia. So at the time, Antoinette was also performing at the Fez, a famous belly dance nightclub. And she was a star dancer there. So when my mom describes to me what it was like to see her first belly dancer, to see Antoinette, she says, she saw on the outside what she had always been feeling on the inside. Oh, isn't that lovely? And there's so much in this story that I wanna share with you, including how my mom was a blonde haired blue-eyed belly dancer who eventually became also a headlining star dancer at the Feds. She was quite revered and cherished by the Middle Eastern musicians she worked with, the club owner, Lou Shelby, and the Middle Eastern women who danced with her. For she was simply exceptional at mesmerizing her audiences, and she became quite respected for being an American cabaret belly dance pioneer. I've already shot an entire video, actually, on American cabaret belly dance lineage, which I can't wait to share with you all. And speaking of American cabaret belly dance, that's the shimmy I wanna show you. An AMCAB shimmy, to be sure. Let's get into it. Okay, Kristen, thank you again for this awesome question. What's my favorite shimmy and what do I do to help it keep it smoothly rolling along? Well, AMCAB is actually quite key in this instance because it's the American Cabaret Belly Dance style posture that really allows 
for the most robust shimmy of this sort. And it also allows for the most energetic connection and the ability to project that energy out to your audience. It also allows for a lot of emotional connection and expression. So let's set up that posture real quick. Bring your feet inside shoulder width apart. Bend your knees deeply. Tilt your pelvis under. Take your weight to the middle or toward the back of your feet. Raise that rib cage up. Arch the upper back. Roll the shoulders back and down. Magnetize the shoulder blades toward one another. Lift the arms, extending them out toward the sides. Turn the palms up to feel your shoulders rotating upward. Now, let's keep the bend and keep the tilt under, which really is about taking that tailbone toward pelvic bone, pelvic bone toward belly button, belly button toward spine. You'll feel your quads engaging and you'll feel your abs engaging, especially when you let your rib cage be somewhat behind the hips and float it up. From there, you'll be able to arch the upper back even more and roll these rotated shoulders back and down even more and draw the shoulder blades toward one another even more. You will feel a lot of engagement through the core and at the shoulders and chest as well. Keep all this active as you turn your palms face the floor, drop the elbows slightly, drop the wrists slightly, lift all of your fingers. Thumbs and middle fingers are gonna come toward one another a bit. So try to find a level of comfort and power in this powerful posture. If you try this a few times, where you take your elbows back and fingertips forward, and then draw the shape to return to a high W, you will feel a nice stretch and opening of the entire upper body, and also you'll be able to draw in some command to your arm frame. And by command, what I really mean is that you feel energy radiating out through your palms. How do we access that? Well, this is what makes this posture extra special. First, as we bend our knees, we're rooting our energy toward the earth. As we tilt our pelvis under, we're really activating our creative center. As we raise the rib cage up, we're allowing a projection here from the solar plexus to occur. We're also opening the heart as we roll the shoulders back and down and draw the shoulder blades together. This allows us to lengthen through the neck, through the third eye space and the crown. An awareness of the energy from the waist down being rooted toward the earth and from the waist up, elevating up through the crown will really help you find a way to draw the energy up the spine, but also to project it out through the heart. So sink back and down as you do this portion of this arm movement, which really allows you to connect that heart space energy into the palms of the hands and then radiate it out like a superpower. Ready to shimmy? From this position, we are going to take our already bent knees and alternately bend them deeper. You're gonna feel a fantastic stretch in the obliques as you bend. You're also gonna feel your abs and core working and your upper body working at the same time, simply by working these shifts. And it is a pretty way to work on your legs and abs and upper body. If you even want to activate glute squeezes here, you can, because this is just a fantastic exercise. Perfect for fitness and for belly dance. Increasing range of motion, increasing tone. Take a deep breath at any time. Setting up your arm frame again as you do so. Inhaling up, exhaling to find your most commanding position. Breathe at your own pace as you continue, but pick up the pace of the knee shift. Let's not shorten the movement though. Let's keep the depth of bend and let's keep the bend even, meaning both knees bend as much as the other. Even as we speed up more and even as we speed up more, the key here is to keep the depth of bend even and your tempo even, even as you speed up more. Now I'm not doing those glute squeezes anymore. That was just for a warm up. Really, you want to just work from the knees here and keep the upper carriage high and solid. 
Keep going and keep going. And notice how much of an earthquake you can create here. Feel your feet solid on the earth. Feel the energy that you're generating in the root chakra, the sacral chakra, while feeling open, projected, heartfelt, and very free up top. You could be doing head movement, hair work, wrist turns, hand ripples, snake arms. You can really take off up top to layer on to this shimmy. But for now, I'm only breaking down the lower body shimmy. We'll work with all of these items in future videos. But just so you know, there's plenty you can do up top while keeping that lower body going. Certainly move your arms around. This makes a great start for all of that layering. See if you can keep it up. See if you can make it faster. A hip scarf definitely helps. And five, four, three, two, you won. videos you gave me with this. I'm sending so much love to you for that. Hey, if you like me too, would you hit like on this video? I would love that as well. Also comment below with your next questions. This is awesome. And you know what? If you're as happy as I am in this relationship, like you're comfortable with me, hit subscribe. Take this relationship to the next level. Finally, if you want to be notified as to any of the upcoming videos, ring my bell, baby, and I will notify you. Thank you so much for watching, lovelies. See you next time.